everyone. Today is very exciting because EcoFlow has completely revamped their River Power Station lineup and they kindly sent me the new River 2 and River 2 Max models to review ahead of launch. Thanks EcoFlow. In this video, we'll go over what's new across the entire River 2 lineup. There's a few surprises that you'll want to know about before you make a purchase. The River 2 series has been completely redesigned from the ground up with a very long list of improvements. First, there's an all new design that looks like a small cubic version of their larger Delta units with a two-tone finish and integrated handle in the back that makes the top flat and stackable. Even though there's a spot for it, unfortunately there's no wireless charger on top. The River 2 lineup comes in three sizes in simple 256 watt hour increments. So there's a size for any situation. The pure sine wave AC inverters are now sized to be roughly equal to the battery capacity, which balances runtime, output, and efficiency. This makes picking the right unit much easier. If you need to run higher wattage appliances, size up and you'll also get longer runtimes with the larger battery. The River 2 line comes in at a much lower price than the previous generation. There are differences between the specs that account for some of the prices, but these are a much better value overall, and you can save an additional 10% by using the coupon codes in my description. My favorite new feature is the new lithium iron phosphate or LFP battery chemistry. That's much safer and has a four to six times longer life cycle compared to the last generation units with NCM batteries. The 3000 cycle rating means you can charge and discharge this every day from zero to 100% for 8.2 years before your battery loses 20% of its capacity. They've seriously upgraded their extreme wall charging so the River 2 and Max can fill from zero to 100% in 60 minutes flat. That's a full 36 minutes faster than the previous generation. The largest River Pro takes one hour and 10 minutes, which is still 26 minutes faster than the original. Solar input has been improved to support a wider range of panels. The River 2 Max and Pro can now handle voltage up to 50 volts for a total of 220 watts. The smallest river gets a bit of a downgrade from 200 watts to 110 watts, but can accept 30 volts now, which will make it compatible with a wider range of panels. Bidirectional USB-C ports mean you can use the same USB port to charge the river's battery up to 100 watts in addition to using it to charge your phone or computer. There's also a new emergency power supply or EPS feature that lets you plug in appliances like an internet router and when the grid goes down it will switch over from wall power to battery within 30 milliseconds. Now that's slower than a true UPS but it's still handy to have. In addition to Wi-Fi connectivity, they've added Bluetooth to connect to EcoFlow's excellent smartphone app that has been redesigned for the launch. Lastly, EcoFlow increased the warranty on all River 2 models to an industry-leading five years. This more than doubles the two-year warranty that the previous River models had and is backed by EcoFlow's excellent support network. Now one major downside is the River 2 lineup isn't expandable anymore. Now I have mixed feelings on this. I honestly didn't end up using the expansion battery much in my River Pro because they didn't stack and the unruly cable meant it wasn't very portable. I think they could have come up with a stacking expansion system that was more elegant, but maybe the market just wasn't there. In any case, the price and weight differences are small enough between the new rivers that if you need more capacity, just size up to the larger unit and you'll get more powerful AC output and solar charging to boot. And be sure to use my coupon code in the description to save 10% off all River 2 models. Overall, this is a much needed redesign that clarifies and modernizes the River product lineup. Let's do a deep dive on the smallest unit first, the River 2. It is a 256 watt hour LFP battery and 300 watt pure sine wave inverter. It's extremely portable because it only weighs 7.72 pounds, which is 30% smaller than the previous river. It retails for $239, which is $110 less than the original river, but it does have a slightly smaller battery and much smaller inverter, but still that's a major price cut. This is best suited for charging phones, tablets, laptops, and other smart devices like a drone that charges through USB. 
It's also great for running small DC powered compressor fridges. The smaller inverter and battery make it a good fit for running fans and maybe a CPAP machine, small TVs, and other low draw appliances. In the box, you get an AC power cable, a car charging cable, and manual. There isn't a solar charging cable because EcoFlow now packages that with their own solar panels. So if you're using third-party panels, you'll need to pick up an MC4 to XT60 adapter like this. The display and output ports are nicely organized on the front panel. AC and DC inputs are on the back, right below the integrated handle. I much prefer this handle design to the bulky top handle of the older River and River Pro. It's very comfortable to carry, and easy to slip into a bag if you're working from a cafe or on the road. There's a single fan on the back that pulls air through small gaps around the front panel. This is an unusual setup, but it actually did a great job keeping things cool and it was very quiet in my testing. I like the more matte finish on this compared to the River Mini I reviewed earlier because the shiny black finish was a serious fingerprint magnet. This design feels rugged and straightforward, which I really like, even if it's a bit plain. The front panel has a bright, clear display EcoFlow is known for that shows the state of charge, input and output watts, and the time calculation to empty or full. It's smaller and monochromatic compared to the previous generation, but it's brighter. On the left is a 100 watt cigarette style port with a regulated DC output at 12.6 volts. There isn't a protective cover over the port, so you need to be mindful of dirt and water. In my tests, I was able to confirm that the voltage was a steady 12.6 volts, regardless of the battery's state of charge, and I could pull a full 100 watts or 8 amps of power. To measure the amount of power I could pull from DC, I connected a steady 50 watt load for 5 hours in a 0.2C test. I measured 220 watt hours, which is 86% of the rated capacity. That's a very good result, especially for such a small unit I tested standby losses by leaving the DC ports on and nothing connected for 24 hours. And it only lost 1%, which is incredibly good. This is a very good unit for powering low draw appliances like a fan or light. Below the display are three USB ports. There's a pair of 12 watt USB A ports and one 60 watt USB C port that supports bi directional charging. In my test, I was able to pull power from all three USB ports at once to charge my MacBook Pro, iPad Pro, and Anchor power bank. No problem. I also brought the River 2 camping and it did a great job keeping all my devices charged up. I tested the new bi-directional charging by USB-C by plugging this 85 watt Apple power brick into the USB port and it charged at 60 watts as advertised. On the right are a pair of AC outputs for the 300 watt pure sine wave inverter that's capable of 600 watts surge. In my tests, I was able to pull 300 watts continuously for a full 20 minutes. Even at max output, the fan was very quiet at 46 decibels at one meter. In my AC capacity test, I pulled 190 watt hours over five hours, which is 74% of the rated capacity. Now that's less than average, but typical for small units like this. The River Mini and Blue Eddy EB3A had very similar efficiency ratings. I also tested AC standby losses by leaving the inverter on, but having nothing connected. After 12 hours, the battery had gone from 100% to 68%, which is about 2.7% an hour. In the same test, the Blue Eddy EB3A drained to 56%. So the River 2 has much better AC standby losses, probably because of the smaller inverter. These losses are why the capacity tests tend to be lower on smaller units. Around back is the AC wall input and solar or car DC input port. These aren't hidden behind a protective door like all other EcoFlow units, and actually I like how easy it is to plug right in. The handle sort of protects the charging cables too, which is a nice feature. AC charging worked great. Just plug the power cable into the wall and it will charge at a speedy 360 watts with no loud power brick. I confirmed that this could fill the battery from zero to 100% in 59 minutes and 40 seconds. So it exceeded the advertised speed by a whole 20 seconds. 
You can adjust the charging speed in the app in increments of 50 watts, up to 360 watts, which is a really nice feature. At 50 watts, it is completely silent. When you increase to 100 watts to 250 watts, the fans are still a very quiet 38 decibels at one meter. Even when charging at 300 to 360 watts, it's only 44 decibels, which is really quite quiet. The River 2 supports pass-through charging, so you can use AC, DC, and USB while charging. I was curious if I could charge with the AC wall plug and USB-C together to hit 420 watts of input, but connecting both at the same time never went beyond 360 watts. I think it switches from USB to wall charging if it detects AC power. I plug this into my Pacifica with the included cigarette adapter to XT60 cable and was able to charge at 100 watts, so it would only take about three hours to charge it on the road. For solar charging, EcoFlow sent along their newer 220 watt bifacial solar panels to test. Now these are really cool because they have solar panels on the front and back to pull more power in less space and use a thin layer of tempered glass for better heat management and longer lifespan than a typical folding panel. Best of all, it's IP68 waterproof, so you can leave this outside in foul weather. The glass construction does bring the weight up to a hefty 20.9 pounds, but it feels very well built and rugged. I tested this via the MC4 to XT60 cable that was included with the panel. The solar input on the River 2 is limited to 110 watts, and this panel had no problem maxing it out and easily charged it within three hours. To push the panel, I connected the River 2 Max since it has a higher 220 watt limit, and I was able to get 202 watts, which is an impressive 92% of its rating. This would be even higher with a more reflective surface than grass. I also tested to see if you could charge with solar and AC at the same time, and it seems to favor AC when it's connected. The iOS and Android app connect with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and it worked great. Once connected, it's super responsive and shows you the state of charge, input and output power, allows you to turn the AC DC ports on and off, and has a rich set of settings to further customize the River 2. It's honestly the best app in the industry, hands down. Overall, I came away very impressed with the River 2. It's smaller, lighter, and has all the features you'd want in a pint-sized power station. Let's take a look at the mid-sized River 2 Max unit next. This shares all the design and features of the River 2, but doubles the LFP battery capacity to 512 watt hours, increases the AC output to 500 watts continuous. It retails for $469, which is $130 less than the original River Max, but it does have a slightly smaller battery and inverter. In the box, they include the AC power cable for charging, a car charging cable, a 5521 cable, manual, and the warranty card. The front panel is a different layout to fit more ports. In the upper left are the USB outputs. There's an additional 18 watt quick charge USB-A port and a higher power bi-directional 100 watt USB-C port on the upper right is the regulated DC output that's similar to the River 2 but adds a pair of 5521 ports that put out 3 amps or 36 watts. At the bottom is the AC output section for the 500 watt pure sine wave inverter which is capable of 1000 watts of surge power. This larger unit has 4 outlets so you can power more things at once. The AC wall charger is a blistering 660 watts and this charged in about an hour and 8 minutes. Car charging worked fine at 100 watts, which means a five to six hour recharge time. Solar input is rated at 220 watts or 11 to 50 volts at 13 amps, which is a good range for a unit this size. Unfortunately, my River 2 Max was a pre-production unit, so I wasn't able to fully test the AC and DC output capacity. Look for a follow-up review where I do that in depth along with the Pro. At the time of this review, I don't yet have the River 2 Pro, but it's a pretty straightforward upscale of the Max with the same USB and DC outputs, 
car and solar inputs, and overall design, but it increases the LFP battery capacity by 50% to 768 watt hours. It increases the AC output to 800 watts continuous, 1600 watts surge, and the AC wall charger operates at 940 watts. It retails for $599, which is $50 less than the original River Pro, but has a bigger battery, better inverter, and is more compact. All this comes packaged in a unit that has the same layout, width, and depth as the Max, and is just 1.2 inches taller and 3.3 pounds heavier. So overall, it's a dense little package. I'm looking forward to reviewing this when the unit arrives later this year. Ooh, all right, well that was a lot to cover, so let's wrap this up. The pros of the River 2 line are that there's this new stackable design that's rugged, modern, and lightweight. It has an LFP battery that's safer and rated for 3,000 cycles for a much longer lifespan. The AC inverter is now sized appropriately for the battery for maximum efficiency. There's a one hour wall charge time with Xtreme. There's improved solar charging, bi-directional USB-C ports, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth with an excellent smartphone app, low standby losses, an EPS feature, and a five-year warranty with excellent service. Are they perfect? No, but it's pretty close. First, there's no expansion batteries. Second, there's no wireless charging pad, and I feel like that's kind of a miss on this size unit. The switch over time for the EPS feature is a pretty slow 30 milliseconds. The back handle design is a bit unusual. I'm not sure if it's better than a simple folding handle, especially because there's no wireless charger on top. There's lower AC efficiency on the River 2, but that's typical for these smaller units from any brand. I think EcoFlow has a winning formula for the new River 2 series. It has best-in-class features, great performance, and design in a lightweight package that's covered by a five-year warranty and sold at a lower price than all their competitors. I really like that EcoFlow has streamlined the River and Delta series to be a baseline and then a Max and a Pro to make it easier to choose the right model for your needs. All right, that's all I have to say about the River 2 series right now, but definitely stay tuned for a follow-up video on the Max and Pro once I get a chance to give them a full test. Let me know what you think about these in the comments below. If you liked all the information I packed in, please give this a like and consider subscribing. And if you're thinking of picking up a River 2, be sure to grab the 10% discount code in the description of this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Till next time. <laughs>